My name is Sylvester Nyomalichi. You're welcome to Sound Mind for Positive Life. Today I want us to take our teachings on the mind to a whole new level. And that is, we want to address this issue of identity crisis. Who are we really? I am assuming that you who is watching and listening, you are a believer. But if you are not a believer, don't tune off. Just stay tuned and listen. So it will help you to understand the life of Jesus, the life that he offered us. And at the end, when you give your life to Jesus, you will be happy for it. Identity crisis. I found out that we as believers, sometimes we are, we, are, we are not sure who we really are. We talk of ourselves as human beings, we talk of ourselves as human, you know, we talk of ourselves as sons of God, we talk, as, talk of ourselves as coming from heaven, and then again, on the other hand, we talk of ourselves as coming from the earth. So it's like we're confused. We're not even sure which life we're living. So we accommodate, in order to accommodate our weaknesses, in order to excuse ourselves for all the failures, we declare that we're humans. But if you really want to live this life, you will understand that Jesus didn't come for us to live as humans. We are already living as humans, manifesting all the weaknesses and the strengths that go with the life. That goes with the life. Jesus didn't come so that uh, you know we will continue to live the way we used to. He came so that we will live the life of God. Actually, that's why he came, that we may live the life of God. I want to read uh, John's Gospel, chapter 1. I want to read from verse 11. To 13. He says, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now listen to this. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So the life that Jesus came to offer us is not the life of a human being. Because we already have that life. We were already living that life. So the life he came to offer us is, is God's life. Now look at what he says there. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So it's, it's a spiritual birth where we become, we are born into the life of God. So it's a different kind of life, a different kind of nature, a higher life, a higher nature, a superior nature, a nature that puts us in, you know, puts us in, in, in authority over circumstances of life, over the devil, over sickness, over the troubles that we go through here on earth. Now, so I am born a human. And now I meet Christ. I receive him into my life. I am born a son of God. So on one hand, I am a son of God. On the other hand, I am a son of man. Before I became a son of God, I was a son of man. That was the only life I knew. That was the life I lived. But that life wasn't pleasing because of all the weaknesses and the sins that goes with it. And God decided to elevate me. The Bible says he raised us up with him and made us to sit with him in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. He raised us up. He raised us up. So it's a life that raises you. A life that lifts you from this plane to the highest plane. Where we live the life of God and walk in the power of God. Where his authority is available for us to exercise. So at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So demons hack it when we speak in the name of Jesus. Problems hack it when we speak in the name of Jesus. The wind here, the seas here, the, 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 the storms here, the sun here. Everything responds to it. Death responds to it. Everything responds. Everything responds when we call that name Jesus. Because the authority of the Godhead is available unto us in Christ Jesus.
So the issue here is this. How do I see myself? Who am I really? Am I a son of man or am I a son of God? Now, note this. What the one you focus on is the one that dominates you. The life you focus on is the one that dominates and is the life you manifest. So if you focus on the natural human life, that is what is going to dominate you. That is what you are going to be manifesting because you will always see life as a normal human being and that life puts you in subjection to the devil. That life puts you under the authority and the power of the devil so the devil will continue to have authority over you, exercise over you and mess up your life for you. But if you focus on this higher life that God has given you, the Son of God, the life of a Son of God, you focus on it, you give it authority, you yield to it, that life will start to dominate you. That life will start to flow out of you. The authority will flow, the power will flow. You will walk in miracles, you will walk in victory. The devil will be under your feet, Satan will be under your feet. All problems of life will be under your feet. And you will live that supernatural life. Holy, righteous, perfect. That's it. So we sin because we focus on the natural life. The devil continues to have the upper hand because we focus on the natural life. And if you want to change that, focus on the life that God has given you. Focus on the life. So who are you? You are a son of God. Before you say, oh, I'm a Nigerian. Remember, you are from above. You come from heaven. Because your life comes from heaven. Before you say, I'm an Igbo man. I'm a Yoruba man. I'm a Hausa man. I'm a British. I'm an American. I'm Chinese. Whatever your tribe you come from, or nationality, or color of your race, before you say that, remember, you are first a son of God. You are first from heaven. God Almighty is your father. If you focus on the life, you put that life first, you will move in power. You give it expression. The anointing will flow. The devil will lose his grip over you. You will see yourself walking in victory. So it's all about belief system. It's all about how you analyze with your mind. It's all about which one you choose to focus on. Remember, Jesus didn't come that we may live the human life. Jesus came to give us the higher life, the life of God. Jesus came to share his nature with us. So yield yourself to that life. Think of yourself as a son of God. Don't be ashamed to tell people, when they ask you, where are you from? Don't be ashamed to say, I came from heaven. <laughs> it sounds odd. It sounds strange. It looks as if you've gone crazy. They will call you names, but you're mindful of it. Check your Bible. You will never find one place where Jesus said, he is from Nazareth, where Jesus said, he's from Bethlehem, or he's from Galilee, or he's from anywhere else. But when he talks about where he came from, from above, from heaven. You will never find a place where Jesus said that Mary was his mother or that uh, Joseph was his father. People say, your mother is here, your brothers are here, your brethren are here. Oh, is he not the son of the carpenter? They said so. Jesus never said so. But when he talks about who his parent is, he calls God Almighty his father. And when he did that, he took up stones to throw at him. But that's the truth. And when he prayed, he said, our father who art in heaven. My father. Our father. God is his father. So his focus is not the natural connections. His focus is on the spiritual connection, the heavenly connection. And if you want to live like Jesus lived, remember he came to this earth and lived that life before dying so that we can learn how to live the life. So we can see how it is done. He left us an example. Peter said that we should follow in his steps. So let's follow in his steps. Give attention to the life from heaven. When you introduce yourself, be conscious of where you come from. When you talk of yourself, when you think of yourself, when you're faced with challenges, when you're faced with difficulties, when you're faced with anything, remember who you are, where you are from, who your father is. Be mentally alert. Be conscious of the life that you come from heaven. And you will be blessed indeed. God bless you, Son of God. And if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity for you to do so. I want you to say this prayer after me because this life, you can only have it when you invite him into your life. He said to those who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them power to become sons of God. So I want you to receive Jesus right now. Pray this prayer after me. Say, oh God, I am sorry. I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, your son, came to this world 
died on the cross of Calvary for my sins, was buried. After three days, he rose again from the dead and ascended to heaven. I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for giving me your life. Thank you for giving me your spirit. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you. Father, I pray for anyone who has prayed this prayer with me right now. I ask in Jesus' name that you will forgive, that you will restore the person, you will save the person, and you will heal the person. I pray that this person, oh God, this man, this woman, this boy, this girl, will be given power right now to become your son, and he will live for you forever without turning back. Thank you, Father. Let him live in the miraculous power of God and be a living testimony that indeed you are real. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you again.